here. Oh, there we go. All right, welcome to Spark Studios this week. We've been having a great time learning about our Creator and how He is sovereign, how He made everything, how He's in control of everything. And we have, of course, our participants of VBS. Did you guys have a good time this week? Yeah! Oh, they're a little shy because all the adults are here. Let's try that again. I don't know if I don't know if you were excited or not. Did you have a good time at VBS this week? Yeah! All right, we are going to have you guys come up here because we're going to sing a couple of songs for the adults. And while they're coming up, I will just uh, tell you about some of the things that happened this week. This week, of course, as I mentioned, we've obviously been learning about God, about Jesus. We learned about David and how Jesus would come from David's line and the Savior would be born and he would die for the sins of the whole world. We've also had a good time outside. You guys didn't get to see it. Hopefully we'll have some pictures. But we had a 30-foot obstacle course outside uh, last night. Even some of the adults partook in it. I think I pulled something in my back because uh, I was racing Calvin. He won, by the way. But in fairness, he was standing there watching the kids for like 15 minutes. So he got to see like the best way to go through the course. I just got, I was just like, hey man, you want to race? And I never looked at it, never saw anything, and I went at it. He barely beat me, no. And a couple other guys, who else went? I saw Rick and Bill went through there together. Where's Bill at? Is he here today? Oh, I can't see him, I don't know. Well, anyway, Rick, Rick and Bill went at it, and I was afraid. I was like, oh man, something bad's going to happen. But it was a good, it was a good race. Uh, we have a couple songs that we're going to sing for you. And the kids were also learning memory verses this week. So there will be uh, a select few of them who are going to say some of the memory verses that they learned. The first song we're going to be singing is called Hey, Jesus Loves Me. This song was from last year's VBS as well. So enjoy as the kids sing.
Can we give them a hand? Good job, guys. At this time, we have our very own Declan, and he's going to be saying Romans 4.21. Romans 4.21. What he has promised, he was also able to perform. Good job, Declan. They worked really hard on those verses, so thank you. Good job, Declan. We're going to sing wide, high, long, deep. Why don't we give them a hand? Good job, guys. We have another one that's going to say a memory verse for us. We have Sophia. If I can. Oh, there she is. Sophia, she's going to be saying Psalm 37, verse 5. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust also in Him, and He shall bring it to pass. Good job, Sophia. Give her a hand. Some of, we're going to be telling you who won the memory verse contest, and I think you'll be surprised how many they said. Uh, we're going to sing now, Fear Not. Called you by name, 
Go ahead, give them a hand. And kids, well, we'll have Anna say her verse first, and then you guys can go sit down. Anna's going to be saying Psalm 34, verse 8. Psalms 34, 8. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who trusts in him. Good job, Anna. Give him a hand. You guys can go ahead and be seated then. Go back to your row. Didn't that sound great? They worked really hard on those. Some of those songs, usually, usually we only sing like maybe a chorus of the song and maybe the first verse. But we went all out this year, and I think they did a really good job learning all those verses, for, or all those all the words in those songs for you guys. All right. We are going to have this, I think, without a doubt, this year has been the largest offerings that we have ever had. Now, part of that is because we have a budding, a, uh, a budding um, rivalry, okay? If you guys don't know, if you weren't here, uh, Aaron Strunk up here. Raise your hand, Aaron. Aaron and Cindy Bearer, they have been going at it like two lifelong rivals, okay? I'm pretty sure Aaron, he said, he's building a house right now, I think, and I'm pretty sure he said, like, forget the house. All that money's going to pennies, all right? And Cindy, she's like, forget retirement, I'm going back to work, okay? So they have been, I, we had an offering where we have the offering, and they all come up and they put them in here. And we had an offering, we do the countdown, and this thing was literally dead even. So we had them, we had them come back after, the, towards the closing rally, and they could buy some more pennies if they wanted to. And the buckets actually broke off of the scale, okay? The, the handles came right out of the buckets. So we've had a good time with that. Now, so far, I think it's uh, three to one, unfortunately. And I forgot to mention Matt. Matt is our resident uh, pumper-upper, okay? Now, three to one. And the girls, though, the one that they did win, they just destroyed the guys. They came out and they just utterly obliterated them. So, but we do have one more offering. We do have one more offering, but I'm not sure who's going to win. Oh, I don't know. Ha, ha, hold up, hold up, hold up. Let, let, let's, tr let's try that again, okay? Ready? Who is going to win the offering? I think we should try it without Matt and see what it sounds like. No Matt this time. Ready? Who's going to win the offering? I heard, I heard girls more this time. All right, so it's time for the offering. If you kids can come up and go ahead and put your pennies in the bucket. It looks like it's gonna be a close one. Is that it? Is that it? Uh-oh. I think something's happening. Something's happening right now. What is it? <laughs> if you want to if you look behind you, something's happening back there. Don't scratch up the pews with the wheelbarrow. <laughs> Here comes the boys. They'll make it down here eventually. <laughs> here he comes. All right, good job, boys. Now, go ahead and fill that bucket up as much as you can. 
If you can't see it because of the mountain of children, it's a wheelbarrow full of pennies. <laughs> All right, let's not break Matt's back. He, he's got to work. I think we can leave the rest of them right there. Leave the rest of them right there. All right, guys, have a seat. Boys, have a seat. Go find your seat. Go sit back in your pew. Hey, if they're not in the bucket, they're free game. <laughs> All right. Let's have the countdown. Ready? 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. The Good job, boys. All right, good job with that, guys. Let's get those off so they don't kill somebody. All right. Thank you, guys, everyone, for, for participating. In the offering, Shh. as a show of good faith and mutual competition, we'll have Cindy and Aaron shake hands, and we'll meet again next year. All right, thank you so much. And just so you guys know, the... These offerings, uh, these offerings, they help to pay for VBS, so we appreciate anyone who was able to give money so that the kids could exchange them for pennies and have a good show of fun with the, with the scale there. Um, before we dismiss the kids, we just have a couple prizes to give away. I told you we had a, a verse contest in which uh, the... The winner, whoever said the most verses, would get $20 for saying the most verses. So these kids, they got a sheet that looks like this, except without all my scribbles all over it. And it had 12 verses on it. And so throughout the week, they've been practicing those, and they had the opportunity that they could go to their worker uh, throughout VBS during the time they were outside, and they could say those verses uh, in hopes of winning the $20. But not only for that, we know that the Bible says... Uh, to hide God's word in our heart so that we might not sin against him. So we hope that some of those verses that they learned will help them to stay on the right track, living for God and doing what God wants for them. But we have a winner for the memory verse contest. And the winner, well, let me give you the runner-up. I'll give you the runner-up. Anna, Anna, I'm drawing a blank, Briner. I almost forgot her last name. Anna Briner, she said seven verses. Okay, they had a list of 12. So Anna said seven of those verses, but the winner was Kale, uh, Kale, <laughs> Kellen Kresge, not Kale Kresge. Kellen Kresge. He said nine of the 12. So Kellen, why don't you come up here? Here. $20 for Kellen. Here, Brad. Brad, can you pass this out to the winners when I call them up? And then we had our visitors contest. Whoever would bring the most visitors to VBS, because obviously the more people that come... Uh, no, you're good, Brad. Brad, Brad, you're all right. He's confused. <laughs> it happens a lot. No. Um, we had a visitors contest, so obviously the more people that come, the ultimate goal of VBS is obviously to share the gospel, and so we always want the kids to invite their friends so that they can hear about Jesus. And we had, on the girls' side, or I'll start with the boys, actually, we had Parker and Declan, who both brought five of their friends, Parker and Declan. Can you guys come up here? Actually, Declan... 
Declan, come on up here. We can probably get a picture of all the winners. I'll have uh, Kellen, if you can come up here, too. And then where's Parker at? Is Parker not here today? All right, we'll have to, we'll have to get that to him. Uh, and then on the girls' side, McKenna brought the most visitors out of anyone. She brought seven of her friends with her. So, McKenna, come on up here. <laughs> Good job. $25, right? 25 Okay, so the winners of the visitors contest got $25, and so give them a hand. They did such a good job. All right, guys, you can be seated. You can be seated. And I want to thank, um, on behalf of Julie, I'm sure I can say this, I just want to thank everyone that, all the workers that were here, all the people who helped, even if you didn't stay here with the kids the whole time, you know, you helped uh, buy candy, we, we passed out it must have been like 10 five gallon buckets of candy you know we had all the people who set up and then of course just people that did behind the scenes stuff kale did i don't know if he did all of it but i know he did a lot of it he did a lot of decorating and so can we just give a hand to everyone who helped out with that the last thing or two more things Two more things. I said the, the, re, the whole reason for VBS is obviously so we can share the gospel. And we did have five young people come to know Christ while they were here. They made a decision uh, to accept Jesus Christ into their heart. And so we thank the Lord for that. Next year. This year just ended. But next year is coming. So next year, two, uh, 2023, we have twists and turns. Twists and turns right up there. So... Don't get lazy, all right? We need you guys to prepare right now. Aaron's going to start stocking up on pennies, and uh, Kale's going to go home and start chopping up cardboard, all right? So thank you so much. Give us a hand again. Thank you. And children, you can be dismissed down through this door right here. a blessing was it not uh, just to hear the children uh, singing all their songs let me see here oh Travis am I am I good but yeah just to hear the children sing all those songs and uh, and I know Ryan already mentioned a bit praise the Lord um, every night VBS, I was pretty much just an observer, um, just walking around, just, just watching and looking. And uh, what a blessing uh, that is, just to be able to partake of it. Uh, thank you so much uh, to all the workers. Uh, if you helped work in VBS, would you please stand up, please? I know so many of you worked in VBS. Would you stand? Many, many people. Let's give them a hand. Thank you so much. Uh, registra registrations, crafts, uh, snacks, all the different foods, uh, things that were made, the snacks that were made, all these decorations. Uh, thank you so much uh, for all your labors. Uh, thank you, parents. There's no way we get a batch of pennies like that without your involvement. Um, I'm sorry that they drove you nuts about that, all right, about... Uh, getting pennies, but it's been a great vacation Bible school. It was hot. I mean hot, but thank the Lord for air conditioning and praise the Lord uh, for that. Um, we are going to take up the offering this morning. Did we ever find the plates? Uh, this is for our, our people here. Of course, if you're visiting with us, uh, this is not for you. Um, this is for the people uh, 
uh, of our church, uh, taking up the tithes and offerings. It's the tithes and offerings of God's people that enables all this to happen, uh, not only Vacation Bible School, but so many other things we do uh, throughout the year. And thank you so much uh, for all of your faithfulness. Let's have a prayer and ask God to bless the offering. Father, thank you so much for all the hard work uh, that went into preparing for Vacation Bible School. And what a wonderful week it's been. And I've watched the smiles, the shouts, the joys of all these children Thank you for the wonderful songs they were able to learn about you, Lord. And, and Lord, thank you for the, for the friends uh, that, that trusted Christ as our Savior. What a, what a blessing, Lord. Thank you for all the parents that supported it, brought their kids every night, uh, and, and Lord, brought the pennies and everything that the parents did to support their children. Thank you so much for that. Lord, I pray that this memory a vacation Bible school will be just like the memories of my vacation Bible schools when I was a boy. Lord, that they'll be pleasant memories. Lord, they'll remember these songs. They'll remember there's a God that loves them. And Lord, what a blessing that is in this world in which we live, just to remind the children that there is a God up there that loves them. Lord, help us all to remember that, Lord. Thank you for this opportunity we have to give Lord, I pray that you'll bless the gift and the giver, and I ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. And it's a blessing to have Nathan back, isn't it? Uh, good to have Nathan. No more vacations for Nathan for the rest of the year. Um, but it's, it's good to have Nathan back. That was good. Well, I'm going to talk to you just for a few minutes about the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, we're living in a world, wow, it's just spiraling out of control. I think we'd all agree with that, no matter what our political affiliations are. Uh, this world, every time we watch the news, we hear of something crazy. I mean, and the world just gets crazier and crazier and crazier. But, you know, we do have an anchor. We do have an oasis. And, of course, that's what we try to create during Vacation Bible School uh, every year uh, for these children. Just a little oasis, just a little make-believe land where that they can come and learn about something that's very, very real, and that is God. And I, I trust, I hope you agree with that, that God is very, very real. And man, I'm so glad about that, that we do have an anchor, we do have an oasis um, in God. Somebody said to me one time, many times actually, Pastor, if there's really a God, why? Why does he allow all these things? Why is he allowing what's going on in the world? 
And that's a fair question, I think, a good question. But we have to remember that God made us not robots. He made us with a free will. He put Adam and Eve in that garden. He put a tree there. He said, do what you want. I mean, you can eat the tree of the knowledge of good and evil if you want or don't. It's up to you. God made us with a free will. So we need to encourage one another. And that's what I hope to do this morning is to encourage you. There's a wonderful verse in the Bible. Maybe you've heard it. Uh, most of you, I'm sure, if not all of you, have heard this verse before. Hebrews chapter 13, verse number 8. The Bible says, Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. There is not much in this world that we can trust or count on anymore. Even churches sometimes, sadly, pastors even, I mean. But there's one thing you can trust in. That's the Lord Jesus Christ. And the Lord Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And we'll talk about that for a few minutes. Let's pray. Father, I pray that you'll help us. Uh, Lord, just to remember there's a God that loves us. Lord, help us to remember Jesus and think about what he did for us on the cross and that he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. What a comfort. What a comfort. And Lord, I pray that you will comfort us this morning. And Lord, if there's anybody here that does not know you as our personal Savior, I pray that today would be the day, the best day, that they would be born again, trust you as their personal Savior. And we ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. The theological term for that is immutability. God is immutable. That means God never changes. And Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. His very nature, the nature of God, is unchangeable. That means he's as powerful as ever, right? We sing a song, the blood will never lose its power, and that's true, right? And so he's as powerful as ever, he's as loving is ever he's as merciful as ever and i love this he's as full a full of grace as ever i love those verses that god talks about grace and he gives more grace and and that's what the lord has for us he's god he's he always will be god you know we mention isaiah sometimes god says my thoughts are not your thoughts my ways are not your ways why because he's god his thoughts are much higher than ours. His ways are much better than ours. There's a bunch of verses. We'll look at them real briefly here. Psalm 90. Before the mountains were brought forth, or ever thou hast formed the earth and the world, even from everlasting to everlasting, thou art God. Genesis 1.1. You won't see it on the screen. But in the beginning, can you, can you name the next word? God. In the beginning. Malachi 3, 6. For I am the Lord, I change not. I, I love James 1, 17. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and comes down from the Father of lights with whom there is no variation or shadow of turning. No variation or shadow of turning. I love Revelation 1.8. I am the Alpha, the Omega, what? The beginning and the end, saith the Lord. And so there's just a couple thoughts I want to share with you this morning. There's a couple things for sure. There's many of them, but two things I want to focus on today to encourage us is number one, his power. His power is the same yesterday, today, and forever. God is all powerful. Right before Jesus ascended up into heaven, right? He was crucified. He was getting ready to go to heaven. And he's there right now on the right hand of the Father, according to the scriptures. And Jesus said this in Matthew 28, verse 18. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. God is all-powerful. Let me tell you, the devil, he's powerful too, 
But I'm so thankful the Bible says in 1 John 4, 4, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Referring to the devil. God is greater. And Jesus said, all power is given unto me by the Father. And we're not going to get into the Trinity this morning. God the Father, uh, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. These three are what? One. Three members of the Godhead, all one God. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. And they are very, very powerful. What kind of power? Well, we know about his creative power. I mean, I believe that God created the heaven and the earth. Genesis 1-1, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. How did he do that? Well, the power of his word. And God said, let there be light. And guess what? There was light. Ah, you really believe that? Well, I believe it. How do you believe that? Well, by faith. By faith. Faith is believing in something that you cannot see. Seeing is believing, people say. You know, I'm from Missouri. That's a show-me state, right? Anybody in here from Missouri? The show-me state, right? Uh, well, uh, you show me and I'll believe you. Well, I see the evidence of God. I saw the evidence of God up here this morning. Amen. Each and every one of these precious children were created in the image of God. Each and every one of them, God knows them by name. Each and every one of them, the very hairs of their head, according to the book of Matthew, the very hairs of their head are numbered. God called them from the womb. We're not even going to get into that this morning. But God created us, male and female, in his image. We're created in the image of God. John chapter 1, verse 3. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was, that was made. Colossians 1, 7, 1, 16. For by him... Were all things created that are in heaven, that are in earth. Wow, look at this. Visible and invisible. Even those atoms and all the things, that, the molecules, everything that makes up matter. All the elements, everything. God created them visible and invisible. And there's a bunch of other things in that verse, but we're not going to read all that this morning. And you know what? God created everything. Boy, that's pretty powerful. You know, I moved here to northeast Pennsylvania from Michigan about 20 years ago. And I've never gotten used to these mountains, the streams, all the beauty of Pennsylvania. We live in a beautiful area right here. And every time I go outside, I see the beauty of God's creation. And that's part of his power, his creative power. And then I want to mention his redemptive power. And this is so important. His redemptive power. Jesus Christ has, has the power to save a soul from a place called hell. And what a wonderful thing for God to have redemptive power. And that gospel, um, Ryan, and by the way, Ryan did a great job this week, MC and everything. But you know what? Uh, he mentioned the gospel. Why do we do this? Well, it's nice to have a place where the kids can come and play and jump on the... We rented a big obstacle course last night, and, and all that is wonderful. But the most important thing is the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. And uh, Paul said it so well, Romans chapter 1, 16, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. And here we have it, it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth. To the Jew first... And also to the Greek, everybody, everybody is eligible for God's free gift of salvation. And I like this. Jesus paid the price for our sins. He paid the price for our sins. And he's the only one in whom salvation can be found. You know this church cannot save you. I cannot save you. No man can save you. There's only one Savior. And that's the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus said in John 14, 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but what? But by me. And what is the gospel? Well, the very definition of the gospel is the death, the burial, and the resurrection 
of our Lord Jesus Christ. If you don't have those three things, you don't have the real gospel, the biblical gospel, the death, the burial, and the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm so glad about this. Jesus will never lose his saving power. He'll never lose it. I know I grew up in a home as a boy in a pretty rough home, okay? My dad was, a, was an alcoholic. He really was. And uh, I remember the day they knocked on the door and said, Marshall Wolverton, yes. The guy, he, ser he was served divorce papers. I remember that day. I'll never forget it. And my dad turned to my mom and said, what is this? And we moved out. And I've said it before. We moved far away, right across the street to where my grandma lived. <laughs> I mean directly. And we could see my dad out there cutting the grass. We could see my dad out there doing all of his things. And one night, my dad opened up the windows, and he took shaving cream, and he put on the, the paneling, I'm sorry. And it stayed there, I don't know how long, that, that shaving cream. But you know, one thing led to another, and my dad found Jesus Christ. Or let me rephrase that. Jesus Christ found my dad. And my dad was saved. He was brought up out of that horrible pit, the miry clay, and Jesus set his feet upon a rock and established his going. And guess what? We ended up moving back home, and our lives have never been the same ever since. And it's all because of this. Jesus will never lose his saving power. We have his redemptive power, his protective power. I'm so glad about that. And God is able to protect us, to keep, the Bible calls it a hedge upon us. I pray for these children. I pray for the people in our church. And that's one of my main prayers as a pastor, that God would keep what we call a hedge. Again, that's a Bible term, a hedge around his people, his hedge of protection. And you know what? The power of God never wanes as far as the ability to protect us. And God protects us. I love what it says in John chapter, or let me start with uh, Psalm 23. Psalm 23, I think most everybody loves that scripture. It says, the Lord is my shepherd. What's that mean, protector? That's what a shepherd does, protects those sheep. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie, lie down where? In green pastures. He leadeth me where? Not beside the stormy seas, but he leads me by the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. I love verse number four. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Why? For thou art with me. God is with us. I'm so glad about that. John chapter 10, Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. I'm the good shepherd. And the, the, sh the shepherd gives his life for his sheep. I'm so glad we have a shepherd that loves us and what? Protects us. The Bible talks about a hireling. There, there's a certain shepherd that's a hireling. He's not going to risk his neck. For those sheep, if a bear comes, a lion comes, a thief comes, he's going to hightail it. Why? Because he's, he, those aren't his sheep. He's a hireling, the Bible says. But the good shepherd, guess what? He doesn't run. He doesn't forsake us. God said, I'll never leave you, nor what? Nor forsake you. Why? Because he's going to protect us. And he'll never lose that power. And then let me talk about this for a minute, his promises never change. His power never changes. This is a two-part message. And our people are sitting here thinking, two-part message? What are you doing? That's a, this is not even fair. What do you... Uh, but anyway, a two, normally I have about a ten-part message with six head points. No, I had a sub point. No, I don't. No, I don't either. I don't. Uh, but anyways, his promises never change. Look what it says in Romans chapter 4, verse 21. And being fully persuaded... Being fully persuaded that what he has promised, 
he was able also to perform. I want you to think about this. There's not one promise in the Bible that has not come true. I mean, you can even study it. If you want to be a student of the scriptures, study the second coming of Jesus Christ. Study Matthew 24. It'll tell you everything that's going on in our world today. It's amazing. Everything that's happening, God told us about it ahead of time in his book. We have the promises of God. And I love these promises. Again, we're not going to mention all of them, just, just some of the best. And the best of the best is he's promised to save us. God has always saved his children. It goes all the way back to when the world was destroyed by a flood. If you believe that kind of thing, I hope you do. It's in the Bible. God saved Noah. The Bible says, but Noah found grace in the sight of the Lord. He was, Noah was not better than anybody else. He was just a believer. And he found grace in the eyes of the Lord. And he was saved. You know, the Bible says, as in the days of Noah, as in the days of Noah, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. The second coming of Christ, the end we call it, And I believe it's getting closer and closer. I'm not trying to spook you. I'm just going by what the Bible says. You can read the news. You can see what's going on in our world. And I think you'd have to agree with it if you studied it out. But he promised to save us. Romans 10, 13. I love it. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord, what? Shall be saved. He promised. My dad was 33 years old, ironically. Same age as Jesus when he was crucified from what we see in the scriptures. That my dad called upon Jesus Christ and he was miraculously, marvelously saved. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And that's a promise that's never, ever, ever going to change. Hey, he's promised to save us. He's promised to supply us. Let me ask you this morning, what's your need? Well, again, our greatest need is salvation. But God will supply every need that we have. As a matter of fact, there's a scripture that says he knows our needs. What? Before we even ask, he knows. I love the promise of Philippians 4.19, but my God shall supply all your needs. All of our needs. Now let me ask you a question. Does it say wants? It doesn't say that. It says needs. And here's the hard part with that. We don't always know what our needs are. We think we know. We think we need. You ever think you needed something, you go out and buy it? And you were convinced you needed it. And you buy it and you think, man, what a waste that was. So, you know, we're not the best judge of what we need. But you know who knows what we need before we even ask? God. He knows what's best for us. So, uh, well, I don't believe in God. Why is that? Well, because the Bible says he's going to give me what I want. Well, the Bible never says that. Okay? He does say he'll meet our needs. Well, he didn't meet my needs either. How do you know that? Because God knows what we need. More so than what we know, but God will supply us our needs. I love this scripture. You probably heard it in Matthew. We call it the Sermon on the Mount, you know. Matthew 6, verse 25. Therefore I say unto you, take no thought. This is Jesus teaching his disciples. Take no thought what you shall eat or what you shall drink. Nor yet for your body what you shall put on. Is not life more than meat? And the body, then raiment, look, look at this, I love it. In verse 26, behold the fowls of the air. They sow not. I was sitting on my table this morning, eating a bagel. Had my coffee and a little sparrow. This, this isn't preaching, this is the truth. Seriously, this happened. I'm sitting there eating my bagel, drinking my coffee and a little sparrow. A little sparrow, and it caught my eye. I was just looking at that sparrow. 
It says here, the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap, nor do they gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. And then he adds this, aren't you not much better than them? We're much better than a bird, okay? According to God, by the way. He says, I take care of creation. I take care of all these animals. What makes you think I'm not going to take care of you? And listen, God's power never changes. His promises never change. And he says, I'm going to take care of you. My God shall supply all you need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. You can count on Jesus. Not only to, to supply us, but to satisfy us. To satisfy us. Think about this world for a minute. How much satisfaction is there? Now, if I were to, I don't want to discourage you this morning, but are you satisfied this morning? You know, companies, you know, they're, they're advertising executives. They come up with these things. Satisfaction is number one. Your satisfaction is most important to us. I could go on and on and on. But let's put a little circle around yourself and say, ask yourself, am I, am I satisfied? You know, this is probably one of the biggest things the devil uses to mess us up. One day we'll look at our job and we'll say, you know what? I'm not being fulfilled. I'm not satisfied with this job. And if you're not careful, you'll get another one. Thinking that's going to satisfy you. And you'll say, you know, this job kind of stinks just like the last one did, you know. And it'll become a cycle, right? We can do the same thing with hobbies. Man, that brand new bow. State of the art, top of the line, everything new. And man, you use it for a season or two. You go into the bow shop and you see another one. And the guy behind the counter will tell you. He'll say, oh yeah, that your bow is outdated. He wants you to buy a new one. He wants you to become dissatisfied with that bow. Same thing goes for marriage, husbands, wives, satisfaction. And if we're not careful, the devil, you ever heard about a dog chasing its tail? And that's what life can become. Why? Because we're not satisfied. I love the old hymn. It says, only Jesus can satisfy your soul. Only he can take your heart and make it whole. Only Jesus can do that. You know, my dad used to try to find his satisfaction in a can of Budweiser. I'm not trying to be funny. He tried to find satisfaction in things, gambling, but he never, it was always a hole, a big hole. There's only one person that can fill that hole, and that's God. That's Jesus. I'm not trying to feed you a bunch of psychology it's the truth okay uh, he promised to satisfy us here's the thing with good thing let's look at psalm 103 verse 2 bless be bless the lord O my soul and forget not all his benefits look at this here in verse 3 who forgives all your iniquities and heals all your diseases verse 4 who redeems your life from destruction who crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies. Look at this here in verse number five. Who satisfies your mouth with good things. You know there's a verse that says, Oh, taste and see that the Lord is what? That the Lord's good. Amen. Who satisfies your mouth with good things so that your mouth is renewed like the eagles? He promised to satisfy the hungry soul. Is your soul longing for something God put that there. There's something inside of a human being that yearns for a creator. And that's one of the biggest reasons why I'm not an atheist. Because you look at every civilization in the world, you can go to any jungle, you can go anywhere, what we call the deepest, darkest places, and they're worshiping something. 
They're worshiping something. I don't care if it's a rock, a totem pole, a river. They're worshiping something. Why? There's something inside every soul that yearns and knows. There's something more to all this. What if there wasn't? What if there wasn't? Oh, there is. And there's 66 books. 66 books that talk about it right here. But you know what he promised? Psalm 107, verse 9. For he satisfieth the longing soul. He satisfies the longing soul and fills the hungry soul with goodness. And then he promised to secure us. Two more things and we're done. To secure us. And I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this. But you know, salvation is a gift. He gives it to you. He gifts it to you. You can't earn it. How can you earn it? No, it's a gift. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. He gives you a gift. How about your parents? You buy a gift for your child. What do they do? Well, sometimes they take good care of it. Other times you find it in the front yard. What are you doing? Your grandma just bought you that, or your, your, your grandpa, or your, your, your we, what are you doing? Go get that out of the front yard. How many of your parents have ever done that, honestly? Man, put that thing away. <laughs> take care of that thing. I mean, you buy them one of these TV set, you know, things, Nintendo or whatever it is, Xbox. Man, the games, and what are you doing to these controllers? It's cost me 500 bucks, you know? Put that away. Take care of it. Salvation is the same way. God gives us a gift. It's very priceless. Priceless. What are we doing with it? What are we doing with that gift? God says it's a gift and it's yours. What you do with it is up to you. Sometimes people say, oh, that person can't be saved. Man, look at them. They're not doing this, 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 this. Well, salvation is not about doing this, 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 this. Right. Salvation is about forgiveness. Salvation is about God taking your sins and putting them under the blood of Christ. And when he looks at your sins, all he sees is the blood. You remember, you remember in Egypt, the death angel came, the tenth plague, the final, the final deal. God said, here's what you do. You take that innocent animal, you kill it, you take its blood, you put it on the doorpost of your house. Whoa, what kind of God are you? You mean you want me to kill this animal and put the blood, smear the blood on the door? Yep. And God said this. He said, when I see the blood, I'll pass over that house. And that night, I don't know how it happened. I like watching the Ten Commandments. The Ten Commandments is kind of like a mist coming down. I don't know if it was a mist. I don't know if it was fog. I don't know what it was. But that night in Egypt, the firstborn of every person and animal died in the whole land of Egypt. But God said this, when I see the blood applied I'll pass over that house. That's why they call it, not to insult your intelligence, but the Passover. <laughs> the Passover. That is when God passed over that house. Truth be told, in that house were probably some real scoundrels, some real characters. But God didn't look at that, He looked at the blood. And I love the song, when I see the blood, when I see the blood, when I see the blood, what? I will pass, I will pass over you. Simple question in closing. Has the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, been applied to you? Amen. Well, I believe in God. Well, the Bible says even the devil believes in God. But he's not going to heaven. Are you saved? You know, there was a religious fellow. He was very curious about this man named Jesus. His name was Nicodemus. And one night he came to Jesus at nighttime. 
when the crowds were gone, it was just him and Jesus. He said, how can I get to heaven? Jesus said, Nicodemus, you must be born again. Nicodemus couldn't understand it. He said, how can I be born when I'm old? Can I enter the second time into my mother's womb and be born again? Jesus said, no. I'm not talking about a physical birth. I'm talking about a spiritual birth, Nicodemus. Nicodemus, you must be born again. You know, I was born on Thanksgiving Day, 1963. The same week, I say it all the time, the same week that JFK was assassinated is the week I was born. I was born Thanksgiving Day. That was my physical birth. I was born of the water. The water broke. Man, the doctor said, here it comes. Because the water broke, we're born of water physically. We're born of the spirit spiritually. And we're not going to go to heaven having one birth. It's, according to the Bible, it's just not going to happen. Jesus, Jesus himself said to a very religious person, Nicodemus, you must be born again. Let me, let me share something with you. You probably know this, but when Jesus was crucified, they took his body down. There were two men that cleaned it, wrapped it, and buried it. Two men. You know what their names were? Joseph of Arimathea and Nicodemus. Sounds to me like that conversation had an impact in his life. And that's what it's about. God wants to have an impact in your life. Amen. Don't be afraid of it. It'll be the best decision that you've ever made. He can take that emptiness. He can fill that void. He can take a marriage and he can put it back together again. He can take a prodigal son and change his heart. Only God can do that. And he wants to do it for you. Let's pray. Father, I pray that you'll help us. Thank you so much for being the same yesterday, today, forever. Thank you so much that we can always count on you. We can always go to you and find you. You never leave us nor forsake us. Thank you for your power. Thank you for all your promises that never change. Lord, if there's some people here this morning... They've never been born again. They've never had the blood applied to that doorpost of their heart. Lord, I pray that today would be the day that they would be saved. With their heads bowed and their eyes closed, how many of you say this? How many of you say, preacher, I know that I'm saved. I've been born again. I remember it. How many of you have that testimony? Would you slip up your hand, please? Many, many, many people. Thank you so much. If you could not raise your hand to that, number one, thank you for your honesty. Number two, please do something about it. Let me encourage you to talk to me, email me through the church website. I'd be more than happy to talk to you about salvation, about the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hey, Christian, those of you that are saved, don't forget about God. He's never changing Never forget that, uh, that uh, identity of God, the immutability of God. He is the same yesterday, today, forever. You can count on that. Don't forget it. Let's pray. Father, thank you for Vacation Bible School. Thank you for these children. And Lord, just watching them just enjoy themselves singing these precious songs about you, God. Lord, thank you for the five precious souls that trusted you. Lord, we're born again this week. And Lord, we pray that you'll bless the invitation this morning. Maybe there's some people out here that do not know they're going to heaven when they die. Lord, give them the courage to come down to the front and talk to me and talk to somebody about it. Give them the courage to set up an appointment with me Lord, to reach out, help them to do it. Give them the courage to do it. Lord, I pray that you'll bless this invitation. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Would you stand to your feet, please? Maybe you want to come up and talk.